So energy efficiency ratio is another topic. How many people have heard of uh, EER and then its cousin, the SEER, S-E-E-R, which we'll talk about in a minute. Hopefully you have. But it's a measure of the energy efficiency. The EER is primarily focused on room air conditioners, window units, and it's defined as the cooling capacity in BTUs per hour. So the EER is the rate of cooling divided by the power input in watts, W dot input. So this is in watts. This is in BTUs per hour. Is one BTU per hour equal to one watt? No. So you end up with this apparently dimensionless ratio, but it has units because they don't cancel. Numerically, it's a number, but typically around 8 to 10. And the higher, the better. So if you want energy star, you need the highest uh, ear. These are two conversion factors. You don't need both of them. This will work. If I wanted to convert BTU per hour to watts, there's the conversion. And also, this is based on the controlled environment of 35 degrees C on the outside and 27 degrees C inside with the 50% relative humidity. Why do they even quote the relative humidity? Because if you have higher humidity, you're going to have to condense more of that water vapor as you cool it, and that'll put a greater latent load on your air conditioning system. It's harder. If you have low relative humidity, it's actually easier. So anyway, um, this is the air coming out to keep it at 27. This is your 35 degrees C outdoor air. Do they have a relative humidity on the outdoor air in which you're rejecting it to? Nope. It's, it's not at all. I mean, you're, re you're rejecting it to outdoor air. It's re you, you're worried about the relative humidity if the possibility is you condense it on the evaporator coil. How many people have seen these labels on products? Yeah, the Energy Star. You can see that. Let's take a quick perusal. This is U.S. government issued standard template. Federal law prohibits removal of, did you touch your label? But only after you purchased it can you touch it. You're the customer, you're the consumer. You can actually tear it off and throw it away. Nobody does. So they have different uh, class, like what it is, a room air conditioner with reverse cycle and with the louvered sides. And then you have some manufacturer model and then capacity, 11,000 BTUs. Is that BTU per hour? BTUs? It's actually slang BTU per hour. So it's a rate at which it can cool. All right. So here they put it not only in the ear, a 9.5, which is pretty good. They also try to convert that to a dollar because a lot of people, you know, easily confuse. I just need to select a good model. Okay, here's a scale. This is where this model falls on the scale. Do you want to pay a lot of money per year or a little money per year? What would you prefer, customer? I would like a high efficiency. I'm going to pay less money per year. And that's the, the, why they put that scale. And then they have a little caveat. Your cost will depend on utility rates and how much you use it. Um, and it's comparable units. It's a 2007 national electricity of about 11 cents per kilowatt hour to help you get to the dollars. And more information can be found if you're interested. If the air conditioner has an ear of 9.5, and yet in this class, we studied COP for refrigeration cycles, can you convert the ear of 9.5 to an equivalent COP? And if you did, you would probably need this information to do it. So can you please convert it? And I'll pause and walk around. All right, to solve this problem, we just write down what is the ear. The ear is 9.5, but it was BTU per hour divided by watt. And all you have to do is say, I'm going to really make this dimensionless. So I'm going to multiply this by unit conversion factor. I'll use that unit conversion factor. And actually, then it becomes the COP of the refrigeration because the COP has the same definition. It's the rate of cooling divided by the work or power input. 
it has the same definition, it's just the ear has it in cumbersome units. And so if you multiply that, it actually becomes the COP for the refrigeration. So um, what unit do we point to? Um, uh, 0.293 watts per BTU per hour. And so the COP became 2.878. Good enough. Press forward. Now, if you see the label, they may have a sear instead of an ear. The ear was primarily for window units, the sear is primarily for larger systems, let's say the residential. How many people um, have um, owned a house or their parents have owned a house or their friends have owned a house and, and they've helped uh, consult or they know about the air conditioning system in the house? They've either had to help uh, negotiate with a contractor to upgrade it, maybe they made the purchasing decision or talked to a friend. Anybody know anything about air conditioning in houses, right? One. That's it. Hopefully you'll all graduate, get a job, and become homeowners. But then you'll be faced with this real issue, like, oops, I got to upgrade my, hair, my house, my air conditioning system. So they're going to quote SEER, the Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. Now, it's calculated using as average temperatures. It's like your MPG, miles per gallon for an automobile, highway, and city mileage. Well, this is going to be for national average seasonal energy efficiency. And you want a very highly efficient, so a sear can go up to like 20 some, as well as down in the 10. And I remember when my dad paid a little extra money a number of years ago, it's been a long time ago, to get a 10 sear air conditioning unit because it would save on his electric bill. Now you can't even buy a 10 sear that's so inefficient. It's illegal to purchase a 10 seer. Then nobody makes them in the U.S., nobody sells them in the U.S. So, but it is, as we'll talk a little bit more about the label, but let me take a look at the history here. Uh, in January of 06, which was, what, 10 years ago? Um, air conditioners sold must have at least a seer of 13. So my father's uh, story happened really quite a long time before 20. 2006. Um, energy Star, to be Energy Star, it needs to have at least a 14. One person raised their hand. Do you remember what system, how, what is the sear that you put in a home that you helped? In your own home or your parents' home or something? You don't remember? Anybody know their parents' sear? What's the air conditioning efficiency? Nothing? Well, believe me, as soon as you pass this class and students or fellow friends or family find out that you know anything about air conditioning, you're going to be asked questions and you're going to be consulted. You'll be the expert. Believe me, you will. And they'll be asking questions. What should I do? Should I get this seer, that seer? They're trying to sell this. Anyway, so the United States now requires, after 2005, you can't even make them. And they won't, the, the window units are exempt from this law as long as they have a above 10, around 10. Okay, 2015, a little more familiar. Uh, split system air conditioners installed in the southeastern region of the United States must have at least a 14 sear. So that's where we are today. Where is the southeastern region? It includes Alabama, Arkansas, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Hawaii, Okay, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. All right, is New Mexico in that list? No. Arizona? No. California? They must have lobbied to get off the list. No, not really. They're in a different climate zone. They're dry, drier. These are all southeast is hot and humid. <laughs> Don't we know it? So... You must have at least a 14 series of January of 2015. All right. And the other outside of that, the south, uh, outside of the southeast and southwest regions, they must continue to be a minimum of 13 seer for the national average. Here's a problem. So last year, the electric bill needed to run the AC was $3,000. 
The electric bill maybe for the whole house was $5,000. But somehow you're able to determine when we were running the AC, it cost us only that much money, a fraction of the total bill. So whenever you're doing these economic analysis, make sure that you segregate you know, the cooking and, and the lighting and any other operating consumption from the air conditioning part. So here it is, it's $3,000, and you had a sear of 13. You need to replace it. Somebody says, let's replace it with a sear of 18. And what will be the next year's electric bill? Estimate it. <clears throat> Basically, because of the switch from a sear 13 to a sear 18. I'll give you a minute. How much money do you think it'll be? $3,000? More than 3,000? Less than 3,000? Well, let's uh, solve this problem. What do you have to assume? The total amount of cooling in one year is the same between uh, last year and this year. That's a big assumption. Some winters change, some summers change, but that's an assumption that you have to work with. So one year's worth of amount of cooling has to be the same. So it doesn't matter if I had with the 13 sear or with a uh, 18 sear unit. Now, how much energy do I have to purchase if I have a uh, 13 sear? Wouldn't it be how much cooling I need if I have a bigger house? Maybe if it's in a warmer state times the ratio between the two. So how does that ratio work? It's some energy efficiency averaged over the season. What was our energy efficiency ratio? How much cooling you get for how much energy you have to purchase. So what we'll do is we'll divide by the sear. So if I'm doing it for a sear of 13, I'll divide by 13. If I want to know the energy I have to purchase, if I use a sear of 18, I just divide by the sear of 18. What's the same in both of these equations? The Q's are the same. So if I say uh, the amount of electricity that I have to purchase with the new 18 sear will be the amount of electricity I purchased last year with the 13 sear, just eliminating the Q's, times the, the, um, the say basically the ratio of the sears sear 13 divided by sear 18 or 13 over 18 times the energy professor you said cost dollars okay fine multiply the whole equation over by the cost of the unit of of the energy so we multiply by the cost of the unit of energy and the cost of the unit of energy so this would be 13 eighteenths of the cost with the 13 sear, that will be the cost of the 18 sear. And so the cost of the 18 sear comes in to be 217. So how much did you save? Saving is around $800. That's the saving. What's a simple payback? I know I'm diverting a little bit. This is economics. Simple payback. So if I spent uh, $2,400 more above the 13 sear to get to an 18 sear, because usually that's what the salesman's doing, saying you can get this all the way up here to this Cadillac, you know, a 22 sear, something. Well, then you do a simple payback. So if I had to pay more, how much upfront costs, let's say it was $2,400, that's the, and I was able to save $800 per year. What's the simple payback? How many years? Three years. It's not rocket science. It's not even thermodynamics. Right, it's easy stuff. And so the simple payback is three years. Well, with that, we're done with that topic.